everybody. Welcome to Storytime. I'm so glad you guys are here and listening today. My name is Evelyn and I hope you guys brought your hands so that we can get our rhythm going. Ready? Here we go. Boing, boing, squeak. Boing, boing, squeak. There's a story in my house. It's been about a week. I don't know where it came from. I don't know where it's been. I don't know. Where did it go? I want to hear it again. I look to my left. I look to my right. I look all around. It's still out of sight. I look on the ground and over my head. <gasps> There's something in my bed. Let's see what it is today. It's a barn. Should we see who's inside here? I think maybe there's some animals. Let's open up this door. Who's in here? Whoop. A little cow. Moo. This cow squeaks. I don't think cows really make this noise. This one does. Let's see who else is in here. Oh, there's a little door over here with a chicken. What noise does a chicken make? Maybe cheep cheep or cock-a-doodle-doo. Or if you're this chicken, a little rattle sound. Let's see who else is in here. A... Who is this in here? Zebra? Why do you think there's a zebra in the barn? That doesn't make any sense. What are you doing in there, zebra? Oh, I'm just trying out something new. Oh, all right. Well, today we are not telling stories about barns or even farms or zebras, but we are telling stories about homes. So a barn is probably a home for a cow and a home for a chicken, but not very often a home for a zebra. They live in other places. Today, we have home stories. And I am going to start with a story. Now this one is taken from this book called Rabbit's Gift by George Shannon. And I am going to tell it using puppets. So, and it's gonna be a little bit different because I don't have a rabbit. So instead, I think the star should be our old friend, Sylvester. Hi, Sylvester. Oh, hello. Are you ready to be the star of a story? Oh, yeah. I've been practicing all, all, oh, all night and all day. Okay, well, it's okay. You know, even if you mess up, that's okay. Oh, okay. Well, I hope that's okay. Yeah, it's always okay, even if you mess up. Should we start? Yeah, yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay. Well, once upon a time, Snail opened his door and saw something amazing outside. There was snow piled up. Thanks, Sylvester. Wow! Oh my goodness, look at all this snow! Well, Sylvester the snail went outside to see what was happening. Wow! I've never seen so much snow, he said. Then he looked a little bit closer, and what did he see in the snow but oh, a turnip? <clears throat> now, you might not know this, but turnips are one of Sylvester's favorite foods. So he was so excited about. Wow! He hopped home. Oh, this is going to be amazing. I can't wait to eat it. I love, love, love turnips. Mm, 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 mm. But then he thought for a second. Oh, but, but what about my friend Frog? Frog must be cold in this snow, and Frog does not have a turnip to eat. Oh dear, oh dear. Hmm. I know. I will take it to Frog. So, Sylvester picked up that turnip and made his way over to Frog's house. 
and while he was going, he sang a little song, and it went like this. I am taking a turn up to frog. The snow just does not seem to end. I want to make sure she has food in the storm, because frog is such a good friend. When Sylvester got to frog's house, he knocked on the door. Bang, 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 bang. Bang, 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 bang. Frog. Frog. Are you home, frog? But no one answered. Hmm. Well, I guess I will leave this here. And so he put the turnip right by Frog's door and made his way back to his house. Well, when Frog came hopping home, what did she see? <gasps> A turnip? I love turnips. Oh, this is going to be so yummy. I think I will make turnip cake mm -hmm, with turnip frosting and turnip sprinkles and turnip candles. Mmm. Does that sound good to you? I'm not sure, Frog. But if that's what you like, oh yeah, turnip cake is delicious. Oh. Mmm. So Frog went to take the turnip inside. But as she was about to do that, she all of a sudden thought, Ooh, but what about my friend Otter? Otter is probably hungry. Otter probably needs something to eat. I think I'll take this to Otter. So off she hopped, and as she went, she sang, I am taking a turn up to Otter. The snow just does not seem to end. I want to make sure he has food in the storm because Otter is such a good friend. And soon she arrived at Otter's door. Otter! Otter! Are you home? Are you home? Bang, bang, bang! Bang, 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 bang! Nobody answered. Hmm. Well, I guess I will just leave this turn up by Otter's door. Oh, you'll be so excited. So she left the turn up there and then she hopped on home. When Otter got home, he could hardly believe his eyes. Wow, a turnip! Oh my gosh, I am going to be able to eat this for so long because I'm so little and it's so big. Let's see. Oh, oh, oh it's going to be so yummy. Oh, I can't wait. I don't even know what I'll do with it. I could use it as a bed. I can eat it all winter. And Otter was about to take the turnip into his house when all of a sudden he thought, my friend Elephant. Elephant is so big. He probably needs a lot of food. And well, I have some I can eat. And this turnip, well, Elephant needs lots and lots more food than I do. So I think I'll take this to Elephant. So off he went and he sang that song. I am taking a turnip to Elephant. The snow just does not seem to end. I want to make sure he has food in the storm because Elephant is such a good friend. Soon, he got to Elephant's house. Elephant! Elephant! Are you home? Are you home? Bang, 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 bang! Bang, 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 bang! Bang, bang, bang! But no answer. Oh, well, I guess I'll leave the turn up here by Elephant's door. I bet he'll be really excited when he gets home. So, Otter left the turn up there and went on back to his house. Well, pretty soon, who should come home but Elephant? Well, there sure is a lot of snow out here. Oh, I don't know why I moved someplace with snow. That was silly. And I'm pretty hungry. But then he looked. <gasps> wow, what is this? A turnip? Oh my goodness. <gasps> this is going to be so yummy. Oh, I can't wait to eat it. But wait a second, what about my friend Sylvester? Sylvester loves turnips. I think they might be his favorite food. I should take this back to Sylvester's house. So he carried it back. Ba-dum, ba -dum. I am taking a turnip to Snail. The snow just does not want to end. I want to make sure he has food in the storm because Sylvester is such a good friend. When he got to Sylvester's house, he 
knocked on the door. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, bang, bang. Bang, 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 bang. Sylvester, are you home? Are you? Are you home? Hello? Hello? Are you there? Well, guess what? Sylvester was home. Sylvester came to the door. Hello? Oh, hi, Sylvester. It's me, Elephant. I brought you a turnip. <gasps> wow! Oh my goodness. Come in, come in. So, Elephant brought the turnip into Sylvester's house. Sylvester decided to make delicious turnip soup, and he invited all of his friends, Elephant and Frog and Otter. They all ate that turnip together in some tasty soup, and Frog even got to make a tiny bit of turnip cake out of it for dessert. And together, they sang a new song. Let's all have a turnip party. The snow just does not seem to end. We want to make sure we share this food in the end, because we are all such good friends. The end. Sylvester, you did very well. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. All right. Good listening, you guys. Can you show me your hands? Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Lay them in your lap, lap, lap. Open, shut them. Open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Creep them, creep them, slowly creep them right up to your chin, chin, chin. Open up your little mouth, ah, but do not let them in. Shake them, shake them, shake, shake, shake them, shake them just like this. Roll them, roll them, roll, roll, roll them, blow a little kiss. Mwah. Good job. Our next story is this book. It's called Quill Soup, a Stone Soup Story. It's by Alan Durant and illustrated by Dale Blankenar. This is a new book, and I just think the illustrations are so beautiful. Noko the porcupine was hungry and tired. He'd been traveling through the valley of a thousand hills, and he hadn't eaten for days. He saw a small village ahead, and his spirits lifted. Food and shelter at last, he thought. Meanwhile, in the village, the animals caught sight of Noko. There's a stranger coming, squeaked Monkey. Quick, run to your homes, shouted Meerkat. Noko trudged into the village. It was silent and empty. Hello, friends, he called, but there was no reply. These are all the different homes. Noko went to the first house and tapped on the door. Yes, said Warthog. I've traveled a long way and I'm very hungry, said Noko. Do you have anything I can eat? Warthog shook her big head. I'm sorry, she replied. I ate a big lunch and my food is all gone. Noko knocked at the next house. How can I help? asked Rabbit. Please, I need some food, said Noko. So do I, Rabbit exclaimed. My greedy brother came to visit and ate all my food. I have nothing left. There are so many rabbits. Look at all the rabbits. Noko knocked on Monkey's door. Yes, what is it? Monkey asked. I wonder if you have any food to spare for a poor traveler, Noko inquired. We are poor villagers, Monkey grumbled. We don't have any spare food. So Noko went to Aardvark's house. And Meerkat's house. And Pangolin's house. But he came away hungry. All of them said they didn't have any food. By this time, Noko was very tired and very hungry indeed. But his brain was as sharp as the quills on his back. 
He could see from the villagers' sleek coats and rounded bellies that they were lying. He knew they had food. How was he going to get some? He sat and thought, and after a while, he came up with a plan. I wonder if I might have a little fire and a large pot of water, he asked the villagers. Of course, they replied. They couldn't refuse him then. Noko put the pot on the fire so the water could boil. It seems I shall have to make my own food, he sighed. I will make quill soup. He plucked three quills from his back and dropped them into the big pot. One, two, three. But surely the quills are too hard and sharp to eat, Warthog said. Wait and see. Soon they will soften and release delicious flavor to make a soup, Noko explained. He bent over the pot and dipped in a paw. Mmm, he licked his paw and nodded. Mmm, tasty, he said. Just how his majesty likes it. You've met the king? squeaked Meerkat. Many times, Noko said casually. I always make him quill soup. He loves it. Noko tasted the soup again. Ah, if only I had some carrots, he said ruefully. Rabbit's ears shot up. He wanted to taste this quill soup that was fit for a king. I, I think my greedy brother may have left a carrot or two, he blurted out. He hopped home to fetch them. Noko added the carrots to the water and tasted the soup again. Lovely, he announced. Of course, the king likes mealies in his quill soup. I've got mealies, squeaked Meerkat. She ran away to find them. I don't know what mealies are. I'll have to look that up. Each time Noko tasted the soup, there was something that needed to be added. Beans, peas, potatoes, spinach. And then the things appeared within moments, as if by magic. Now, Noko's soup was thick and rich. Once again, he tasted it. Perfect, he declared, unless I don't suppose anyone has a few worms. Pangolin did. Would you like to eat worm soup? I wouldn't. Noko told the villagers to fetch their bowls. There's plenty of soup to share, he said. And share they did. They drank bowl after bowl of the delicious soup in the firelight until the big pot was empty. Noko sat back, looked up at the stars, and yawned. I wonder if you might have a hole where I could sleep, he said. A hole, cried Monkey, for someone who has cooked delicious quill soup for the king, and who has the generosity to share the soup with strangers, piped in Aardvark. No, my friend, said Monkey, you, Noko, shall have the very best bed in my house. You're too kind, Noko smiled. Before they went to bed, Noko and the villagers sang together, shared stories, and danced in the moonlight. Later on, with a full tummy and a happy heart, Noko the Traveler went to sleep at last. Good night. And that is Quill Soup. Good listening, everybody. Let's see. Um, let's do ten fingers. I have ten fingers. They all belong to me. I can make them do stuff. Want to see? I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them quietly and sit just so. I can squeeze them tight. I can open them wide. I can fold them all together. I can make them all hide. I can make them jump high. I can make them jump low. I can fold them together and sit just so. Our next story comes from this book called We Were Tired of Living in a House. Well, we were tired of living in a house. So we packed our bag with sweaters 
and hats, socks, and a ball of string, and we moved to a tree. We liked our tree. There was always a breeze in the top of the tree that rippled through the roof. A speckled bird lived up there and sang all day just for the sake of a song. And in the autumn, the roof turned scarlet and gold. And we liked our tree until we fell out. Oh no. So we packed up our bags with sweaters and hats and hats, socks and a ball of string and we moved to a pond. We liked the pond. We built a raft and floated about. Fish darted down below among the reeds and the lily pads. Dragonflies landed on the posts and a frog sang with us on summer nights until blub, 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 we sank. So we packed up our bag with sweaters and hats and a frog who was a particular friend. And we moved to Cave. Oh, we liked our cave. We slept on beds of cool green moss. We explored and found blueberries in the woods and dipped our feet in water from the brook. We roasted walnuts over a fire and we hunted for treasure when we weren't busy. And there was treasure we found. We liked our cave until owners came home. Can you tell who the owners were? Three bears! Yikes! Ooh! So we packed our bags with sweaters and hats and of course our frog who was a particular friend and those precious treasure gems we had found and we moved to the sea. We built a castle by the sea, a beautiful sand castle. Oh, we loved it with turrets and towers and moats. We looked for treasure here and dove in the waves and slept to the songs of the surf. We liked our castle on the shore until the tide came whoosh, and our castle flooded. So we packed our bag with our frog who was a particular friend and our precious gems and sweaters and hats and songs of the sea. And we went home to live in a house. The end. Well, the sea part of that made me think of the pirate song. If you guys want to stand up while you do this, it's pretty fun to stand up. I'm going to do it sitting down so you can still see me, but there it goes. When I was one, I sucked my thumb on the day I went to sea. I jumped on board a pirate's ship and the captain said to me, oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was two, I tapped my, no, that's not right. When I was two, I tied my shoe on the day I went to sea. I hopped on board a pirate's ship and the captain said to me, oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was three, I tapped my knee on the day I went to sea. I hopped on board a pirate's ship and the captain said to me, oh, you go this way, that way forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was four, I shut the door on the day I went to sea. I hopped on board a pirate's ship and the captain said to me, oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. When I was five, I jumped and jived 
On the day I went to sea, I hopped on board a pirate's ship, and the captain said to me, Oh, you go this way, that way, forwards, backwards, over the deep blue sea. All right, now we are at that point where if you are standing up, you can sit back down until you hear the magic words. Knees up, and then you can pop up and dance. There was a chicken from France who didn't know how to dance. The only thing that he could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Sit back down. Frog took a turn up along while she sang a little song. The only other thing that she could do was knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Sit back down. Robot would just like to say thanks for listening to stories today. The only other thing that it can do is knees up, Mother Brown. Oh, knees up, Mother Brown. Beep boop, boop boop. Knees up, Mother Brown. Beep beep. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Faster. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, Mother Brown. Knees up, knees up. Never let the breeze up. Knees up, Mother Brown. Woo! Good job. Wiggle, wiggle fingers right up to the sky. Wiggle, wiggle fingers. Wave them all goodbye. Thank you so much for listening to stories today. You can like and subscribe to keep up with all of what the library is doing here, and uh, we'll see you next time. Bye-bye.